everyone, so welcome now to video number two. I'm just going to now be updating you on some of the research I've taken part in recently. So on Thursday the 16th of August, at 10 o'clock a.m., I had my second trip to the clinic for taking part in the autism prosody therapy research. The researcher confirmed to me that she had randomly assigned me to the prosody group, completely by random. So far, the therapy has only been tested on, neuro on neurotypicals, so now they're testing them on autistics. And the therapy seemed to benefit the neurotypicals, so I hope that it will also benefit the autistic people as well. Both therapies, prosody and interoception, are quite new. Today, I filled in a few more computer questionnaires. How I'm feeling today, right now, over the past two weeks, and questions around how connected I am to others and how I feel about this. Quite hard for those questions, very dip quite difficult to answer. Then I did the first trial. The researcher just sat at the other end of the room while I did the task. I wore headphones and listened to various voices with different tones. First off, a few screens showed me for correct answers. This is just like, so I could kind of like um, know what's coming. And that's quite good as well, because it means I could kind of really focus on this and, and it should hopefully help me get more answers correct, because I've already had a sort of like preparation you know, so I can, so for example, you, you see the word angry appear on the screen and then you hear an angry voice. I'm really focusing, this is an angry voice, remember this? <laughs> um, so yeah, so I've shown what emotions, for example, anger correspond with what tone. I tried hard to consign this to memory and I think it paid off a little bit. Then I did a trial. I heard a voice, for example, what do we do now? Sorry, that's really naff. <laughs> Said in varying tones. Alongside two pictures per screen, showing different expressions, with a written caption beneath each picture, telling me what emotion was shown. How I wish this happened in real life, I can't tell you enough. For example, happy versus surprised. Every time I got one right, a smiley face appeared on the screen, with a feedback of well done, or well done, you're doing great, written beneath. If I got it wrong, I was told in writing on the screen a correct answer and a bar emerged saying incorrect. I actually did surprisingly well and I got many smiley faces. I'm sure I'm not this good in real life. The task got a bit more difficult as I progressed through it. First of all, only simple emotions were conveyed. For example, happy, sad, angry, etc. The more basic ones, you know, which, which are a little bit more obvious, I think. And in the second half, more complex emotions such as jealousy, which can sound a little bit like anger, so it's a bit harder to work it out, and boredom were conveyed. I would say actually boredom was one of the ones I found a little bit easier because it's often preceded by, or it's often followed by a, slight, a little sigh. Like, um, what do we do now? Kind of, it's a little bit, there's a little bit more cue to it in a way. Although I'm not sure if I pick it out quite so readily in real life. Again, because it was on the screen and in quite a controlled environment and you're just focusing on the voice, I think it makes it a little bit easier because in real life I also have to focus on the facial expressions and everything else going on. And also, even if I sometimes, even if I get a slight hint that something is, that someone's a little bit, I don't know, doesn't sound quite right in their tone of voice or whatever, I might pick it up slightly, but I'm not quite sure what to do with the information. So there are all these other things going on. So I think it made it a little bit easier it being, you know, in quite a controlled sort of, clinical setting as it were um, and also because the written captions were telling me what emotion each facial expression was conveying which again made it a bit easier because that you know is minimizing the amount of information I have to process particularly as you know I am quite kind of uh, I'm, I'm a lot better at just like focusing on one thing so in this case I really just had to focus on the voice and it took all the other competing sources of information away obviously it's going to make it a little bit easier um, and also, um, my visual sense is definitely the weakest sense out of all my senses, and I do find it really, really hard to read faces, so, um, it helped having, knowing what the faces were saying, you know, having that written down. Um, I could tell the very obvious ones, such as anger, but it is harder to work out the more subtle ones, such as pride, shame and jealousy, frustration, etc. And so I was glad the computer told me what emotion was on each face, as I've already said. Um, so this meant it was easier to correctly identify the tone of voice, made easier by the fact that I only had two options to choose from. You don't have that in real life, there could be many potential options. 
you know, how do you distinguish between boredom and disappointment or frustration, for example, or all the other ones? You and it's you know you might have boredom, frustration, disappointment, sadness. There could be a whole range of negative emotions you have to guess from in real life. I'm I'm wondering whether I can do better on lab prosody tasks, as I say, because I am mono focusing with less sensory distraction, which I've already mentioned. So it, it is quite an artificial environment. In real life, the social cues are not isolated but jumbled together and I can't unscramble them fast enough or know how to respond. I also wonder whether in some subliminal sense, maybe I do pick up on some tones. I mean, I don't think I'm that good at it, but in a computer test I did a lot better than I thought I would and I did get quite a few smiley faces, which did actually surprise me. Um, so it's possible I do pick them up, but I mean, I am very, very sensitive to sound. Sound, the aud my auditory sense is the strongest sense. Um, and, you know, auditory detail, I'm quite good at picking up accents and things like that. Um, and just sound in general, I'm quite good at. So it's possible I might be picking up the tones, at least unconsciously, but I don't know how to respond or how to make sense of the information because often in real life, like, for example, if I, I often think think someone's angry and then I'm like, I'm thinking, I, I obsess about it, I'm thinking, oh, they sounded a bit angry and I'm not quite sure, but they might not have been angry, it might have been something else, maybe something, some other negative tone that might not be at all remotely connected to anger or it might be that person's a bit tired or something, but I've just noticed there's something a little bit uncomfortable there and I'm not quite sure what it is, what it is but I immediately jump to the conclusion that they're angry with me because I am quite sensitive to tone of voice, but I don't always know what to do with that information. I, I, do often, I do often pick up positive versus negative tones, but without always knowing what to do with that information or what it means, or maybe getting it a little bit wrong. Um, so, as I say, I, I mean, I know that I am very sensitive to other people's negative energy. I pick up ne other people's negative energy very... I'm very sensitive to that other people's negative energy and I tend to want to avoid it or run away. I don't like emotionally arousing situations, you know. I often do sense if something's a bit negative that's going on and I don't like it. Um, I don't really know how to be there for people with distress. If someone's in distress, I'm for one who just wants to run away and curl up because I just can't deal with it. It's just too much, too too hard. It washes up on me. I just can't deal with it. I don't know how to deal with it. Um, I mean, even subtle changes in vocal tone can be picked up and make me feel uncomfortable and I can pick up if someone's voice sounds a bit different and it makes me feel uncomfortable and I don't always know what to do with that information but as I say in real life I don't have a computer making a job easier by taking a puzzle out of facial expressions by labelling the faces with captions which seriously does make it a lot easier because you're just focusing on the tone not everything else and as I say I've already mentioned this but I'll say again the computer narrowed it down to just two choices that were clearly outlined and I'd already had a run through of the tones before the trial began so I was literally being trained I don't know how you know, how this is washing off of me, I'll find out hopefully in due course. I was focusing very hard on the task in a calm, relatively distraction-free environment. And I do have quite good musical or pitch memory, at least I've been told this, I'm just going by what my parents have said, but they have told me, certainly my mum used to tell me that I did have quite a good musical ear, and that I can pick up tones quite well, you know, like musical pitch and things like that. My auditory sense is obviously my most attuned sense, um, and I'm good at languages. And in the past, when I was younger, I was quite good at singing. I don't know. I don't think I can say that for myself now. But I think it, certainly my parents used to say, you know, I have a reasonably good musical ear for for um, sound and things like that. Um, and maybe that helped me remember some of the tones. I left with a small amount of pocket money, so I'm glad to have some more some, done something more worthwhile. Um, so that was that one. I'll just find the notes I took because I did it again the other day. I went back in my other journal yes so yesterday on tuesday the 21st of august i did a prosody research again this time at 10 30 a.m this for this time instead of being presented with a choice between positive and negative emotions so hearing a voice and having to decide say between angry and interested which is a little bit easier because angry is going to sound quite different like obviously different and more negative to someone who's interested this time I had to choose between two emotions that belong to the same category. For example, between disappointed and sad, and that's a lot harder, because disappointed and sad can sound a lot more similar, but there's still a subtle difference between the two, and it's a lot harder to kind of, you know, disentangle them. And this made the task more difficult, and I got a few more wrong. I mean, I got a few more wrong than last time. 
Okay, I'm going to dig a more straightforward negative versus positive emotion task. Each time I do this, it's getting progressively harder. So at first, I started off with very positive, sorry, for very simple emotions, such as angry and happy. And then you moved on to slightly more difficult emotions, such as disappointed, bored, you know, surprised, and things like that. And now, um... And, and, and now we're moving away from having to separate negative versus positive emotions, which is more straightforward, and because now negative emotions are being mixed up together and vice versa. The computer told me that the word valence, what the, what the word valence in this context means. Valence means the goodness or, or positivity of an emotion or the badness, negativity of emotion. So joy has positive valence, fear negative valence. I was told that emotions can be categorised according to their valence. The task was brief in duration, and as with last time, a smiley face appeared on the screen every time I got the answer right. Uh, I left with a couple more pounds to add to my research money purse. So yeah, as I say, it was a lot harder because having to... Sep so, for example, you might um, hear a voice... Um, and then you're faced with two faces, one of which is labelled disappointed and one of which is labelled sad. You have to guess which one is correct and that's a lot harder because disappointed and sad can sound quite similar. Or, or frustration and disappointed can sound quite similar. Or happy and interested can sound quite similar. Um, so it, it obviously having emotions of the same valence put together is obviously a lot harder to disentangle. So obviously I made a few more mistakes. But I still did relatively well all considering a, a lot better than I thought I would do but as I say because of all those reasons I cited earlier about it being in an artificial environment and just focusing on the voice and also having the facial expressions labelled obviously made it a lot easier and also of course having a trial one where I heard what the emotion sounded like first of all obviously prepped me and helped me so yes it is an artificial environment and there's no um, no way I'm as good as that in real life I can tell you because well I know I'm not because you know of all my social problems and my inability understanding people but as I say I think I do pick up maybe I do pick up more than I'm aware of but I just don't know what to do with that information because like I said I am quite subtle too sorry so I am quite sensitive to other people's negative or positive energy so maybe I am picking up more than I think I am but I just don't know what to do with it who knows but anyhow so it was very interesting right so I'm going to finish now um as you can see I am wearing a Feeling Philosophical t-shirt again. Um, I actually pretty much now have a whole collection. Um, I just don't have a red one and a green one. I sort of really want a red one and a green one because I don't like leaving a collection incomplete. But I do think I've got enough for now. So I'm going to really try. I'm, I'm not, I might ask for them for Christmas. You know, maybe I'll ask them for Christmas. But I'm happy with ones I've got so far. Anyhow, so I'll carry on next week with maybe some more um, recipes I've tried and any other news. So thank you for watching.